Great. So welcome everyone today to our webinar. Um, we'll be kicking off uh, just in terms of interest of time. So thank you very much for joining our webinar today. We are really excited to walk through um, the seamless payment gateway recon um, reconciliation natively in NetSuite. Very excited to have two guest speakers today from Cobase. Um, so in terms of introductions, my name is Simon van Yeden. I head up the sales for EMEA for Zone & Co. Um, in today's session, I'll be the host. I'm joined by my colleague, Teresa. And if you can maybe just quickly introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Teresa Undemle. I'm the Solution Consultant Manager based out of uh, Netherlands. And today I will be showing you um, a demo of Zone Reconcile. I will be also answering your questions in the chat, so feel free to ask as we go along. I'm looking forward to the demo. Great. Thank you very much, Teresa. And as I mentioned, very excited to have two guest speakers today from Cobase that will be walking us through their solution as well. Um, so I'll hand over to them, Joost and Don, if you maybe just want to quickly introduce yourself to everyone that's joining the webinar today. Yes, thank you very much, Simon. Good morning, dear participants. Uh, my name is Joost Kevlam. I'm responsible here at Cobase for everything that has to do with the corporate client base. So I'm the CCO here. That means I'm responsible for marketing, sales, client implementation, and customer satisfaction. My name is Dan Kulbers. I'm the sales consultant from Cobase. And for today, I'm going to give you a demo about how the payment workflow works via NetSuite to Cobase and receiving the bank statements into NetSuite. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Joost and Don. So to everyone, thanks again for joining. Uh, please note, as we go through today's webinar, we do have technical experts um, on the webinar in the back. So if you do have any questions, if something's not clear, please feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, someone will answer it. We will also have time at the end to go through a QA. and uh, We will pick out some of the, the interesting questions and answer them live. So going through today's agenda, what we will cover. So we'll just give you a very brief introduction around Zone & Co as an organization. We'll then quickly cover Cobase as an organization. And as we start moving through the webinar, we'll go through payment gateways and how this looks in NetSuite. Uh, we'll then go through the reconciliation and connectivity. What's important to look at? One of, what are some of the challenges that we've picked up? We'll then show you a demo of both solutions working cohesively inside NetSuite. We'll then have our Q&A, and then we'll just do a very brief wrap up. Great. So in terms of who are we as Zone & Co as an organization? So quite simply put, what we do is we develop suite apps for NetSuite. And really around all of our applications, our main aim is to bring the joy back to accounting and finance teams using NetSuite. So from a, a team perspective, from a company perspective, we have over 270 employees located around the globe, over 2,000 customers using our applications, which is represented in over 25 countries. And from a solution offering, we have quite a few products, um, which some of you may be familiar with. Uh, so just running through them very quickly, we can cover items like very complex billing with our zone billing solution. We've got our zone approval solution, our OCR with zone capture. So if you're looking to automate your AP process, the core app that we'll focus on today is our zone reconciliation application. We then have um, zone payments, so everything around Stripe, if that's of interest. We then got our zone reporting if you're looking to enhance your native reporting inside of NetSuite. And then one of our new apps that we've brought into our fold is around our zone uh, payroll. So the journal generator and my pay. So if any of these are of interest, um, please feel free to, to reach out to anyone of um, the team. So that's really just a quick intro to um, Zone & Co. Yes, if you can maybe run us through Cobase, who are you, where are you from? Just give us a bit of background um, to, to everyone that's joining today. Yeah, for sure, Simon. Thanks a lot. Uh, here at Cobase, we are all about helping our over 3,000 users, uh, users across the globe to connect to their banks and PSPs globally. So in other words, it is our mission really to make working with multiple banks easier and much more efficient. So we help companies to migrate from the spaghetti that you see on the left-hand side to this neatly organized situation that you see on the right-hand side, where on behalf of the customer, we will integrate their banks and their PSPs into the Cobase platform and then make that data and connectivity available to Oracle NetSuite. 
So as said, we help companies to achieve efficient transaction information in NetSuite. Um, this can be very complex when you as a company are dealing with multiple banks and multiple PSPs. So to solve this, we offer our multi-banking as a service solution where the platform is including a fully managed bank connectivity. Really the starting point of everything we do at Cobase is exactly this bank connectivity. Then we enrich the connectivity with the payment hub and we have additional treasury modules available for customers that have that specific need. Uh, good to mention that we are licensed by the Dutch Central Bank. Uh, this means that our IT processes and our safety is as secure as uh, it would be for dealing with Dutch banks. Very briefly, uh, a high level solution overview. Uh, my colleague Dan will demo this in detail in a bit, but uh, on a very high level, what you see here is how Cobase connects to the EFT module. So that is the outbound, outbound, outbound connection point where the payment file, including all mandatory data for the specific payment type is generated and absorbed by the Cobase platform and ready for execution by the banks. The other way around, we deliver account statements and transaction data into the file cabinet where it can be picked up by the Zone & Co solution and the Oracle NetSuite uh, solution. Good to mention that Gobase is responsible for the full integration and the validation and transformation of the bank file formats. Great, thank you very much, Joost. Perfect. So looking at uh, our webinar today, um, at really how do we enhance your native NetSuite solution? And as you can pick up, you know, using the, the Zone Reconcile solution from Zone and & Co and the Back Connector from Cobase, these are two core elements that we'll focus on today and showcasing how these work seamlessly together, as we mentioned, to enhance your, your native um, NetSuite application. So you're probably wondering, okay, great, where do these solutions fit into the pyramid? You know, how does it work with NetSuite? And uh, again, really hoping that we'll uncover that um, today. So on the first element, if we look at the zone reconcile side, this is a native suite app, meaning that this sits inside of your NetSuite solution, meaning there's no third party integrations or anything um, like that required. Yes, maybe you can touch on from a from a bank connector point of view. I mean, how would this look inside your NetSuite solution? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So the Cobase platform is a standalone platform, but the actual connectivity is achieved through our built, built for NetSuite suite app. So this app can be downloaded from the NetSuite app store, and this ensures the full integration between um, a NetSuite, Zoning Co, and the actual Cobase platform where the connectivity is established. Okay, brilliant. So as we're picking up, uh, you know, hopefully everyone is understanding that. So the reconciliation piece with Zone Reconcile will happen inside of NetSuite. And where this bank connector really fits in is into this connectivity side with um with the banks so maybe you can walk us through when we look at from a co-base coverage point of view i mean where are you active what does it look like maybe you can talk us through um you know where's co-base presence and and you know maybe explain this world view that we're currently looking at yeah for sure so uh, co-base is servicing customers across the globe and uh, accordingly, we are connected to banks across the globe as well. So we are active in more than 80 countries, um, banks scattered over those 80 countries and the same for PSPs, which we will discuss in a bit. Uh, so also PSPs across the globe, uh, very much connected to the Cobase platform as well, and therefore available to deliver that data from those banks and those PSPs globally into your um, uh, single NetSuite instance. Okay, great. And, and let's say, you know, I'm joining this webinar now, I'm looking at your map and I see that there's a country I'm perhaps located in, I maybe have a subsidiary there and I see that it's in progress. I mean, what would you advise if I'm not, you know, in the co-base presence? Um, what would your suggestion be? I mean, would it be to reach out to you and the team to say, well, great, these are the banks I'm working with, these are the locations. Um, how, how would you advise someone to go there if I'm seeing that, I'm not currently represented in, in this, this method I'm seeing. Yeah, great question. So typically we would ask the, the customer or the prospect with uh, what banks and PSPs uh, the company is dealing. And then we can do a review whether we have established connectivity before. So whether it's dark blue, 
whether we are working with that specific bank to establish a connection already, so the light blue, but it can also be the case that there is a bank that we have not worked with before, and then we will simply ask the customer to do a very quick introduction to that bank, and then we will take over the process. So we always strive to be very light on uh, customer involvement in getting this tech, uh, connectivity in place. The only thing that really might be required is a very brief introduction to the uh, to the actual bank in that new country where the customer is dealing with. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing. And uh, you know, we do hope if you see something here or a country where you currently represent it please feel free to reach out with us because I think that is an important note um, to take hold of that it is scalable. You know, we are flexible and we're happy to have a discussion and, you know, see how we can help you. Brilliant. So one thing that you mentioned was a payment service provider. I think we do get this a lot is what is a payment service provider? And, you know, we thought we'd just give a quick summary here. So in essence, a payment service provider is a third company facilitating electronic payments like credit and debit card for businesses. Um, PSP serve as an intermediary between payers, uh, for example, consumers and payees, for example, retailers. I mean, is there anything that you would add on that point? Because I think, uh, as I understand yours, there's a, there's, quite a few PSPs out there. Um, we can maybe touch on the next slide and you can give some comment around what are you seeing from the PSP space? How would this work? Um, you know, what is your experience around PSPs? Yeah, you're fully right, uh, Simon. We are working uh, with many of the PSPs uh, listed in the, in the picture here. Uh, we like working with PSPs. Typically, they are young, forward-thinking companies. They deploy the latest technology, typically really based on uh, API technology. Um, you can imagine that in the earlier days of Cobase, we were working mostly with uh, with banks, and you can also imagine that they work with more type of legacy technologies, uh, whereas the PSPs all have very modern technology available that we can use to connect to them. And as such, it uh, enables us to open up that data to the corporate end users, whether it is directly in the Cobase platform or um, in, in NetSuite. Okay, brilliant. And, and would it be safe to say, you know, if uh, I'm potentially working with PSPs outside of this, I'm a customer, I'm very interested, and my PSP is not showing here, again, would it be safe to say, hey, reach out to the team, let's have a look at your PSP and see what possibilities are there? Yes, absolutely. So we have a dedicated team within Cobase that would uh, always uh, work with other PSPs as don't, than the ones I listed here to really do the utmost to make that data available to the customer as well. Okay, perfect. Brilliant. Great. So we hope you're seeing this, uh, you know, these two elements of uh, ways that we can really enhance the, the NetSuite side when it comes to reconciliation and the bank uh, connectivity piece. I think it is important to note, you know, if we look at, um, in terms of industries, we work across multiple different industries from e-commerce, retail, hospitality, all the way through to advertising design. So from an industry point of view, you know, we're not limited to specific industries uh, that we focus on. Uh, key elements that we look at, you know, if we look at um, just highlighting two challenges that we see from the zone um, reconciliation piece, the first is the payout status unknown. This is a common challenge that we pick up where there's really a lack of visibility around the payout status of individual transactions. And a lot of this requires a lot of manual work. So that's typically one big challenge that we do see um, when it comes to the, the reconciliation piece. The second big challenge that we typically find is the, the volumes, you know, this, uh, what a lot of industries or companies uh, tell us often is that I'm working with really big volumes, you know, we don't feel that the reconciliation piece um, can handle this. And hopefully today in the demo, as we start moving into that and through this discussion, um, you'll see that these two challenges are, are really things that we can handle very well. So eliminating a lot of the manual work required, giving you clear visibility on what's happening from um, your, your payout status. And then the second thing is also showcasing that we can handle very large volumes with our um, reconciliation piece. But moving over to the connectivity side, Joost, I mean, what are typical challenges that you find finding um, as you move through this journey of helping customers with connectivity? 
Yeah, so to reduce the manual workloads and to be able to process these high volumes, you would need to have the bank data ideally automatically available as well into, um, into NetSuite. So to achieve that, there are two key challenges to overcome. The first one is all about bank connectivity and the requirements that banks put on this um, connectivity. Typically across banks, the technology is different slightly different or more different. We see uh, many different types of connectivity that banks offer. Uh, typically finance teams at our end customers do not want to worry, worry about this or uh, have concerns about this technology. So we take uh, that on board. Um, once the connectivity is established, then files start being exchanged over that connectivity. And then the next challenge is, okay, all files that I'm receiving or sending over these channels, they have slightly different formats. So what we do at Cobase is that we convert any, everything in a harmonized uh, format. We make this harmonized data available to NetSuite, and this really uh, improves the auto reconciliation rates that customers are achieving, for example, through uh, through your app, Simon. Okay, brilliant. And it might be worth, as we transition into the demo, as I mentioned, just really giving a, a high level overview of what does this actually look like, you know, from a, a very simplified process. And I think it is important to note that this process might look very different for each person joining the call. This is really just for illustration to showcase, well, great, where does zone reconciliation fit into the picture and where would co-base um, fit into the picture? So quite simply put, you know, if we look at a, a very basic, um, you know, workflow here from a PSP automation point of view. So what would typically happen here is we'd get a website order and this would then flow through to the statement um, reconciliation. So on the left-hand side, we've got the, the customer will pay online. We'll then get an order confirmation, which is sent to NetSuite. The order will then get created with the PSP reference. And what happens is this now comes into the Oracle NetSuite side where our zone reconciliation app sits natively inside of NetSuite. So we'll then pull this information, obviously get the information from the bank. Um, this is where the reconciliation piece um, will happen. But maybe it would be worth, um, you know, from a connectivity point of view, I mean, how does Cobase then work here? I mean, what are you typically seeing and what's important to note? Because, you know, if you look at the, the process flow from the left, we kind of have from the customer payment all the way into NetSuite. But if I look at this process, I see two arrows going both ways. And um, maybe talk us through how the connectivity piece would look like from a co-based point of view. Yeah, so the first element is, of course, that we would deliver the actual transaction information from the PSPs and the banks so they can be reconciled with the information that you see being collected on the uh, left-hand side. So bringing the uh, left-hand side together with the actual cash side on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, and the double-sided arrow means that we are also able to consume payment batches out of NetSuite um, and then in essence solving the same complexity. Yes? So we would absorb the payment batch out of Oracle NetSuite and then we make that payment batch ready for consumption by the actual bank or, uh, or PSP for that matter. Again, different banks, different PSPs have different requirements to the payments that they payment instructions that they re receive. And we make sure that the output of NetSuite is made fit for that specific bank or PSP. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And in summary, you know, if we look at these uh, key three points that we've highlighted, yeah, you've got the website integration. So pulling the live data into NetSuite. So we know exactly when the customer pays, the reconciliation happens immediately within NetSuite. And then what's important to note is, I think, as you mentioned, there's this bi-directional communication with the connectivity piece. So not only do we now have clear visibility that customers paid, it's reconciled in my NetSuite, but we can validate that information with the bank and the PSP. And this is really enhancing that whole NetSuite ecosystem that we're talking about by utilizing the zone reconciliation application and the, the code base um, solution. So that's really a high level overview of a, a very simplified process. Um, what I'll do from here now is I will hand over to um, Don and Teresa that will walk us through a live demo and hopefully this will give you a much clearer picture of the simplified uh, process that we're walking through. Um, so thank you very much, Don, over to you. Thank you, Simon. So I will start with sharing my screen. And I'm gonna show you a bit more about how the payment process automation works from creating payments in NetSuite. 
up to receiving bank statements automatically in NetSuite. Now, first of all, of course, there needs to be done a one-time setup in NetSuite. This is a Go-based setup. This even means that you can, uh, yeah, you can click on which kind of setup you would like, automating bank feeds import, the bank, the bank statements, or automating the payment generation via NetSuite. This is a one-time setup which needs to be done. Like you said, once you have generated a payment file, all the payments and all the, uh, the payment templates will be configured with the vendor setup in NetSuite. That means that Cobase will cover all the payment types you as a user would like to execute. So based on these payment types, you will provide you with the necessary Cobase payment templates. These can cover all your payments you would like to initiate via NetSuite. You can just run a payment file in a regular way in NetSuite. In this case, it will be pushed to the Cobase system. Where in the file cabinet, you can see all the payments which are generated in NetSuite and pushed to the Cobase system. Now, if you're going to Cobase, of course, it's all cloud-based. You easily can log in via our platform by clicking on login. Now, every single user will have their own user ID. This user um, uh, yeah, will have their own ID. There's even a possibility to log in via single sign-on, for example. Now, in this case, I'm going to fill in my own user ID details. Click on continue. There will be a token provided. This token can be scanned by using the Cobase app or by using a hardware token. Once you have scanned this token, there will be a response code which can be filled in and then you will have access to the Cobase platform. In this dashboard, you have full overview about all balances per bank, per entity, per country, per account type. This can be configurable, is highly configurable by yourself and for every single user by creating their own widgets. We have just generated a payment in NetSuite you even see there's a widget available where you can see the work list. And if you're going to click on the work list, you can see all the payments which are generated in NetSuite uh, and which can be accepted by the users. In this work list, you can see all the payments. You can click through to see all the de details in the payment. And you even can down drill to see all the transactions in a batch, for example. If you're going back to the work list, you can see already there will be some tick boxes which can be clicked on. If you're going to click on signing a specific payment, again, there will be a token provided. This token can be scanned by using the Cobase app again. You can leave a remark if you would like. Once you have filled in the response code, you can see that the payment will be automatically pushed to the track and trace section on the left side. And from the track and trace, you can follow all the payments which are fully accepted in the Cobus platform. So here you can see all the status of the payment. So if a payment is accepted by the bank, if it's executed by the bank, if it's rejected, and you always can down drill in here to see the reason why it's rejected, for example. Once payments are fully signed, they will be automatically pushed to the bank and directly executed there. That means that it's not necessary anymore to log in in the several different kind of bank portals or approve payments again there. That can be all centralized within the Cobus platform. Of course, next to initiating payments via NetSuite, you even have the possibility to initiate, for example, credit transfers via the Cobase system. And you, for example, can upload payment files in Cobase, for example, for executing salary payments via the platform. That even can be initiated via Cobase. If you go back after the payment is generated and is, uh, is executed by the bank, you will see once a day all the bank statements in Cobase automatically. Again, in the dashboard, you will have an overview about all the balances which can be generated by yourself. So you can generate your own widgets if you would like. On the right side here, for example, you can see already there are some PSPs connected, for example, Argen and PayPal, and some other banks. You can down drill in these widgets to see the actual balances per PSP and per bank. And this can be down drilled from PSP or bank to account level to currency level, for example. In this case, you will have an overview about all the current balances uh, of the several different kind of uh, days and, and accounts, for example. Now, next to that, you can even view all the statements which are delivered in Cobase. So you always have a full overview about all the statements. You can down drill in the statements to see the actual transactions in a statement. And again, you can down drill there to, yeah, to look at the transaction details as well. All the bank statements which are delivered to the Cobus platform will be transformed in a CAMP53 format and will be pushed via our API towards NetSuite in the file cabinet, where it will be delivered in the bank statement folder. All the bank statement folder 
Zone is having a script. It's picking up, picking up the big statements to feed their reconcile tool. And all the reconcile statements can be viewed in the reconcile bank statement folder. And from here off, Teresa is going to show you how it would work if they are going to use the zone reconcile tool. Perfect. Thank you, Dan. So let me start sharing my screen. So as you correctly uh, pointed out, um, I'm going to fully focus only on the statement side. So uh, now when Cobase has automated the, the process of receiving the statements from both the bank side and the PSPs, they will be securely stored in your file cabinet. Um, for those of you who are already familiar with our application, you know that uh, we have a list of configurations for every single bank account, every single PSP that uh, your company uses. Uh, because in the list that was provided, each of the providers will um, deliver <clears throat> different type of data. So I'm just going to quickly show you the configuration options for the PSP that I'm working with. And uh, for my demo today, I'm using a PayPal statement. And typically, the uh, I saw in the chat somebody was asking about the format. So typically, the, the formats that will be received from providers uh, like Adyen or, or Stripe or uh, PayPal would be CSV files. So what do we do with this file is that we map it out. So every single column, we are sourcing the data that we need for the reconciliation purposes. So similar logic we do with the banks, but we are using different formats, CAMP files, MT900 files, whichever file format is delivered. Um, the most important difference between a regular bank account statement and a PSP statement is that there are additional fees. So the for every single payment transaction made by the customer, the provider will charge you. And you may want to look at an automated way how to summarize those fees. So for example, we have an automation where these fees are all in specific columns. We can summarize them all for you. So you don't need to manually uh, deal with them uh, yourself. Uh, if you are going to set this up, please uh, remember that not to, don't forget to reverse the commission fee sign because usually in the statements, these fees come in positive amounts, but indeed they, these are debits. So these are charges by the, uh, by the supplier. Uh, the second point I want to make is this payment in transit account. So we can support different transaction types. So in case your um, uh, integrations would be creating um, cash sales that are undeposited or payments that are not undeposited, we can be fetching the information from the, the specific undeposited funds account and then uh, with the reconciliation step, moving them all uh, to, to a deposited uh, status. In terms of a PSP statement, we don't really see um, uh, you know, the standard way of how banks would treat the statement where they the customer provides a reference for an invoice they are paying, for example. And rather than that, we see um, individual uh, payment references. So what you are going to see in my demo today is oftentimes a sort of payment reference or PSP reference merchant ID that is mentioned. And that is the matching parameter that we are using. Um, we already mentioned that we can deal with pretty high volumes. The way we do it is that we disregard all the other ma matching parameters and we focus on this one-on-one -on -one matching parameter as a reference, which allows us to deal with a uh, very high volume uh, of data. Typically, we would set these processes in the background, uh, you know, to, to help with, um, you know, the reconciliation, let's say, overnight, so that the user in the next day can start working with the data. Uh, one more point to make before I show you the actual statement is that um, we can help you then with posting the total amounts from both the leading from the uh, PSP statement um, with a use of a clearing account. Why clearing account? Um, because the money is going to be um, or coming in, in both ways. So first source of truth is your bank, your operating bank, where you see the payout. Uh, that would be coming as, as a credit, which is the summary of all the customer payments minus all the charges by the provider. And then there's a second source of truth, which is your PSP statement, where you see every single order placed with every single line and all the charges on it. So what you really want to do is to compare these two values 
and with the use of a clearing account, then manage how many of the payouts are still missing um, and, and to really confirm that the, the payout uh, happened in time and in the values as, as expected. So I'm going to just show you this in a demo in a bit, but just be mindful on the bank account statement. You can already on the configuration side, automate this process by defining that lending uh, clearing account. So let's start with the first. Uh, the first statement I want to show you is the actual PSP statement. And as said, those of you who are already familiar with our application, you can either do manual import, but because we have a, a co-based platform um, uh, available, we don't need to start with any manual imports. The application is going to fetch the data from the file cabinet, import it into the application, create a bank statement out of it, and then the process would start from either the statement list or the statements to process. Uh, how it looks from the statements to process side, if you look at it, um, every single uh, payment file that was received will then represent one, um, one, uh, one line over here. And then the PSP statement is treated the similar way like a bank account. So what I know here or I can read from here is the statement period I'm reconciling. The balances will always update with every single import. The uh, transaction overview, so all the debits, so do, these are all the charges uh, or refunds and the credit. So all the incoming uh, money from the, from the customers. In terms of different scenarios that we support, uh, we had this uh, useful slide with key challenges and the, the, the key industries that we support. This is not a final list, it's just to give you an example of a couple of these. So if you look at my examples over here, this could be um, an example of an e-commerce business that is running a website, uh, they have an integration that creates invoices uh, by the time a customer places an order. The preference of the business might be that this invoice is currently unpaid. So they are really waiting for the reconciliation to happen till they confirm that the payment was received. So this invoice, if you look at it, um, will be open. So it doesn't have any payment uh, link to it. On the other hand, the, the second example will already be an invoice with a payment created by the integration. Um, that payment can be undeposited or deposited. Again, that's completely up to the business to decide how the integration will, um, will work. But the key message here is that we either create a transaction, which in the first use case is the payment itself, so it's not existent, or we will match to an existing payment, but we will uh, make sure that we serve at the second, as a second source of truth, so confirm that the payment was successfully recognized on the statement itself. Um, in case of um, uh, maybe different type of business where they are delivering service that needs to be fulfilled, or it's not a service, but maybe it's a physical product that needs to be shipped out of their house. Sales orders would, um, would be more preferred. So by the time an order is created, uh, until the product is shipped, no payment is re recorded, it's a deposit. So the first sales order here is pending fulfillment. We create a deposit for it. The second um, uh, scenario is a sales order with a deposit um, already created. Um, that might be because this is um, maybe that uh, industry, uh, the design industry uh, where the service was online delivered already to the client. So you don't need to fulfill it and the uh, deposit is already there. Cash sales and cash refunds. So this might be uh, an example of a, of a business which is dealing with very high volumes. Think about those cryptocurrency platforms. Millions and millions of transactions are happening on those platforms every day. Um, and there might be hospitality as another example uh, of a business where you might want to record uh, you know, every cash sale transaction that happened in your business with a point of sales machine. And uh, you may also want to um, record all um, any other uh, refunds. So uh, looking at the list of supported transactions, we know eight different scenarios. Uh, on top of that, we also need to deal with the, with the fees. So if your statements have the fees on each individual lines, our recommended way would be utilizing custom matching rules for it. Custom matching rules are going to ease so much your life with all these additional um, you know, calculations 
because based on a simple logic, the logic is the basically description uh, or the counterparty that has uh, posted uh, this charge or payment to you. Uh, you can then with this if or then logic, create a logic that um, a certain GL code is selected. So it's going to create for you journals for every single charge. This is a very useful tool for any sort of um, bank charges or in our use case, the PSP uh, charges. In case this was an information in the column, then we could automate it through the bank rec, uh, configuration. And you remember this last edit row, is a, this is also automation coming from the configuration. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to save the statement and wait for my journal to be created. Please be mindful that because this is coming from the um, from the PSP side, I'm posting a debit transaction in the total amount that I'm expecting to find on my bank account. And this is going to be posted to a clearing account. While this is running, I'm going to also uh, look at my bank side. So this is, uh, imagine that this is uh, me reconciling my bank account now, where I have all the additional uh, transactions, such as individual invoices that did not come through payments from PSPs, vendor bills and all. But there's one extra line over here, which is the, uh, the payout from PayPal. So PayPal has now paid me the same amount. And what I want to now compare is the two journals that were created, one as a debit uh, from the PSP and the other one as a credit uh, from the bank side to actually balance uh, out on this very clearing account. So let's give the application a second to create those journals and then we can compare and, and click into the register. Uh, by the way, we mentioned high volume, so you are really not expected to do these steps all manually. If you are dealing with those high volumes, uh, we can set up the process to run in the background, uh, you know, in outside business hours. We can also auto save statements for you. So once you um, basically figure out the automation on the way that um, you wouldn't have to actually touch the statements or manually change anything, um, on the PSP side, so we can fully automate the, the flow from downloading the statement from Cobase into saving it into an actual transaction. So I'm just going to pull up the second journal. So um, this is the journal entry that is now posting to the clearing account as a credit. And I would just click into this journal, uh, into this uh, clearing account register to show you that it balanced out. So we did really serve as a second source of truth. So we compared the bank account payout status with the PSP statement status, and it indeed confirmed that all the money that was supposed to come in did come in and landed in our operating bank account. So this is in principle everything I wanted to show you. Um, I'm going to look at the questions if you have any in the chat. Um, Simon, back to you. Great, thank you very much, uh, Teresa and Don. I think that was very insightful to showcase the system, the architecture, how everything works seamlessly together. Um, looking at the chat, I know there were a lot of questions that were that were asked. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, so is there any comment from your side as well in in terms of some of the questions that were asked? I know we we'll cover some of these in in the detailed Q and A, but um, but was there anything that was maybe picked up um, in terms of the chat before we jump into that? Yeah, absolutely, many good questions. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, just to pick out a couple that could be for uh, could be of interest to the wider audience. Uh, one question came in where the, the question was, my understanding is that most PSPs will deliver transaction data in CSV. Uh, how does that work? Um, well, that's exactly the core competence of Cobase. We would accept this CSV file containing all transaction data, and we would convert this CSV file into a COMT53 format that we make available to, um, to NetSuite, to the file cabinet. If at some point in time, the PSP decides to change the actual content of the CSV file, we will take care of that as well and make sure that the COMT53 file stays consistent as it was before. Um, very good question. 
Uh, other question that I'd like to answer is how about exotic currencies? Um, on the Kobe side, there are, are no limitations in terms of currencies. We support over 200 currencies, so everything is possible in that dimension uh, as well. And the third and last question I'd like to answer uh, for the broader audience uh, was a question about whether Kobe's would change the payment processes of a company. There are some slight uh, nuances that would change, but the bigger change is that payments would need to be approved in the Cobase platform. And typically, our customers see that as a big advantage because it takes away manual payment batch uploads in individual banking portals. Uh, and also, it takes away the manual approval steps in the individual banking portals. So once a transaction is signed in Cobase, it is no longer needed to sign it at the individual bank level at each individual bank. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, thank you very much for for sharing yours. And and I think as uh, towards the end of the webinar, we will also share contact details. So if there any is anything that maybe wasn't clear from um, the zone reconciliation piece as well as the Kobe side, please feel free to reach out to anyone in the team. And um, part of this, we will also share responses to a lot of the questions. Almost obviously, due to time constraints, um, we can't cover all of these as much as we we would love to. Uh, so just really in summary, I know there, there's there's quite a lot to take in from these solutions. So um, we just really want to give a high level summary from the you know highlights of the demo of the zone reconciliation piece, um, as well as the co-base piece. So if anything, a few you know key points to take away from the reconciliation and the bank connector side. So one key thing from the reconciliation piece is that this really gives you a second source of truth next to your NetSuite. Um, um, you know, integration piece. So really good to just, you know, triple check that the information is correct. Um, obviously, all the reconciliation happens there. One thing that we hope you picked up is that the application can handle different scenarios for reconciliation um, around the creating or matching to payment sales orders, cash sales and cash refunds. So we're not limited. We can really handle multiple scenarios. And again, one thing that we really hope that you picked up today is that we can handle high volumes for customers working in um, different industries. Uh, when it comes to the Bank Connector side, um, you know, I mean, what would key things be that you'd want to leave the, the audience with today um, around the Bank Connector app? Yeah, so the three key takeaways would be that as a corporate end user, you should not, should not worry about establishing bank connectivity and file transformation. It is what we can do for you. And the second element would be that by using the bank connector, uh, you take out the need to work with the individual banking portals that you might be working with today. And the third item related to that one is that by using the co-based NetSuite Zonico integration, you are improving the audit and compliance strength. As you are taking out manual steps, you have a much more complete audit trail for everything that happens when it comes to transaction reporting or executing payments. Brilliant. Great. And, and I think this is kind of the, the transition, um, a really good question that was asked in, in terms of the architecture, in terms of the layout, what would the preferred approach be around, you know, do I first look at zone reconciliation, then do I do bank connector? Do I do both of these applications at the same time? From your experience, yes, what would you recommend and what would be the best fit for customers that are looking to handle the reconciliation inside NetSuite and also looking to connect to the bank. From your experience, what would you advise um, you know, the, the audience? Yeah, we have a long track record of working together with uh, Zone, Zone Reconcile. Uh, we love working with them. We love working with the team. Uh, in terms of concrete customer advice, we would recommend to start working with Zone, Zone and Co and uh, Cobase in the same time. You can imagine that on the Cobase side, we do need to establish the bank connectivity. This will always take some time. So by the time the Zone and Co uh, Reconcile app is up and running in NetSuite, by that time, typically we would have the first bank connectivity live as well. So we are ready to push the data pretty much as soon as you are live with Zoning Co. You can already start using it with your actual live bank feeds, uh, given that you start, let's say, the two implementations on the same time. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you very much for, for clarifying. So yeah, really hope that everyone got major value from today's session. Um, just a really special thank you from our side, um, Don and Joost, for joining our webinar today, sharing your insights, your experience, 
Um, we really found the session very valuable looking at how to enhance your, your NetSuite solution. So to everyone that's joining today, we do have um, an upcoming webinar. So if you want to find out more um, around our AP automation uh, feature with the three-way match, we'll be uh, running a webinar on that. Um, if you want to scan the QR code or go to our website, you can find uh, more information there. So just a special word of thanks again to everyone for taking the time out of your day to join our webinar. Um, hopefully we've, you found the, value, the information very valuable, very insightful. We hope that we answered all of your questions. If there's anything that comes up outside of this question, please feel free to reach out to the Zone & Code team or the Codebase team um, with Joost and Don. Alternatively, you can visit the, the websites to, to ask any, any questions. Um, what we will do, we will stay on the webinar for a few more minutes. If there are any additional questions that have maybe popped up, um, the team would be to, uh, happy to um, discuss that with you. All of this information will be shared with you um, shortly after. We will share a recording of the session. So we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And again, thank you very much for joining us in today's webinar.